With the launch of the Syndicate Gwent faction, they added six new leaders. Five of them have appeared in the games before. However, one leader was completely new. Gudrun Bjornsdottir. As the name might already give away, she is of Skellige origin. And as tradition in Skellige has it, both men and women learn both the arts of seafaring and war. Gudrun eventually became a pirate, mostly attacking merchant ships with her crew. She and her ship gained quite a reputation over the years of pirating. Eventually she became so feared on the sea that when a merchant ship would see her ship, the Flinder, on the horizon, that they would raise the white flag and surrender. However, eventually her pirating days came to an end and she found a new and better way to make money. She one day arrived with a ship in Novigrad where she discovered that there were more valuable things here in the city than that she would be able to get out from the entire ocean. Her ship was docked in the harbor and she started to take over the docks area of Novigrad, controlling and collecting tax over all the craftsmen and deals that were made in that area. Her former pirate crew turned into a gang called the Tide Cloaks. They are most influential between the Second and the Third Northern War. Up until the formation of the Big Four, which seemed to exclude Gudrun and Hamelfart from the group which was known as the Syndicate. The Tide Cloaks had a few special and different ways to earn gold that were somewhat more unique to them. For example, they used boarding hooks which has proven useful to board other ships while they were pirates. However, now they used them to scale the tall houses of Novigrad to break in and rob them. The Tide Cloaks also often used the sewers as a way to get around through the city, as well as to move their loot. You might wonder where they stored everything, and that answer might be predictable. All the loot was inside the ship which they had once sailed. Some thought the ship was low in the water because it was not well maintained. The truth was that all the gold and silver weighed the ship down. Gudrun always had a close connection with her men, closer than would be expected of any other crime lord. She would often be found in the alleys and warehouses having drinks with her crew. She however didn't spend all her time with just her crew. Sometimes she spent a little time with Imke. She was kind of a prostitute that realized Gudrun was infatuated with her and took advantage of it by seducing her. Gudrun's interest in Imke led her to reject all the people from Novigrad who tried to win her heart over with exquisite floral bouquets and romantic ballads. However, something most likely happened to her gang before The Witcher 3. She controlled the docks, however, during The Witcher 3, Cleaver is in control there. She might have taken her ship back to Skellige and started to live there after the coin she'd made. However, nothing says that she isn't involved in the Syndicate anymore. The Syndicate itself is an organization known about by very few people, and she could be just hidden in plain sight. Geralt, after all, doesn't know too much about the crime lords besides what they tell him, and they might want to have the Syndicate remain a secret to prevent Geralt from informing some of his sorceress friends about it. In The Witcher 3, the name Gudrun can be heard in the bathhouse once you visit for the first time. One of the girls here mentions someone named Gudrun. I'll play the audio right now. Extended in pace. Cleavers is bigger. He's hung like a horse. <laughs> Clear that you've not seen Reuven's. Gudrun calls it Herberos. <laughs> Does it loop back on itself? However, because Gudrun wasn't created as a character for at least four years after The Witcher 3, 
It seemed like they just took the name from that piece of dialogue and made it into a grand leader. That was it for Gudrun Bjornsdottir, the Skellige crime lord. If you want more Witcher lore videos, subscribe and like the video. Till the next video. Bye.